that this is the season that I'm going to save the black man. I've heard the cry of the Israelites. I heard the cry of those that were in Pharaoh's house. They were black men. Black men were in Pharaoh's house. I've heard their cry. God is saying, I heard their cry and I'm going to save them. Hallelujah. You're, gonna, you're getting ready to hear about reparations. Hallelujah. They, they're going to pass a law for this reparations. For the struggles of the African American people. Hallelujah. God said it's going to come in waves. The passing of the law is going to be like in waves. I see like three part waves, three part laws. The first law, you're going to get this. The second law, you're going to get that. The third law, you're going to get this. But God is saying that it's going to take an angel to come and remove it after the first one. Because after the first one, they're not going to want to do the second and the third one. But God is saying that it's reparation time. It's payback time. God is saying the recompense of their reward. You're getting the African American man, the African American family is getting ready to get a blessing. I see a special approval on education for a historic breakthrough for the black residents of Evanston, Illinois. The Evanston City Council uh, <laughs> approved adoption. A vote to provide up to $25,000 in reparations for housing costs. I think this step is going to pull all of America forward. Cities like Evanston are not waiting for the federal government to lead on reparations, despite the fierce debate. I sit here as the great-grandson of a former slave. How could we pay for your great-great-grandfather being burned to death. No one currently alive was responsible for that. There's no other way to close the racial wealth gap except by transferring wealth. Keep your reparations. I do not want the dependency. Across the country, in the throes of Black Lives Matter protests, last summer, Asheville, North Carolina City Council took the lead by voting for $1 million in community reparations. Earlier this month, Georgetown University pledged an initial $100 million to educate the descendants of those sold by the college in 1838. That same week, a major U.S. bank announced its support for congressional action. But even the suggestion of reparations is frowned upon by many Republicans. As reparations, what has that got to do with COVID? As Senator Lindsey Graham recently criticized aid for black farmers in the COVID relief package, Nicole Hannah-Jones, author of the 1619 Project, argues why reparations are necessary. For 250 years, black Americans were legally unable to gain any wealth. That was followed by a 100 year period where black Americans were legally discriminated against in every aspect of American life. Black people freed after the Civil War were initially offered 40 acres and a mule for compensation under President Abraham Lincoln, but it was soon scrapped. Today, scholars estimate that would be equal to between 12 and $35 trillion in value but disagree over the individual amount. About $70,000, which is uh, the average gap in wealth between white Americans and black Americans. I'm supposed to put my hand out and say, How, what's my price? For Professor Shelby Steele, whose grandfather was enslaved. My biggest problem with, with reparations is that it undermines the dignity of those people like my grandfather and father. Complicating the matter is who would qualify. Do you go to 23andMe or a DNA test to determine the percentage of blackness? This was our life, the back of a beaten slave. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee reintroduced H.R. 40 in January, a bill rejected for more than 30 years, which calls for a commission to study reparations on the federal level. It is a reckoning. Uh, that it is time uh, and that it is not legislation filed in anger. But for Republican Senator Mitch McConnell, the debt to blacks has long been paid. We've, you know, tried to deal with our original sin of slavery by fighting a civil war, by passing uh, landmark civil rights legislation. Uh, we've elected an African-American president. For many years, reparations was a political non-starter. The best reparations we uh, can provide our good schools in the inner city, 
and jobs for people who are unemployed. Former President Obama on reparations today. Even though I was convinced the reparations was a non-starter during my presidency, I understand the argument of that we should talk about it anyway, if for no other reason than to educate the country. Now, some Democratic lawmakers see new hope for reparations under the Biden-Harris administration. He supports uh, uh, rep the study of reparations and uh, what the impact would be. Reparations, historically a fringe issue, now part of our national conversation as we struggle to address equity and race. Suzanne Malveaux, CNN.